Hey guys, my name is Michelle Buller and welcome to the MLM Moms Podcast. We've seen countless people reach financial freedom with MLM businesses and now it's our turn. Come join me while I implement real, powerful, and simple marketing tactics to build my six-figure business that most of the MLM industry is oblivious to. I'm Michelle Bowler, and welcome to the MLM Moms Podcast. So, in episode four, I told you guys I had been working on a free course I had created, and then authenticity slapped me in the face, right? Slapped me in the face, punched me in the stomach. Well, I've learned even more from doing that one project, so I wanted to share. I've been working on it more, and I'm pretty sure I have rewritten it about three times now. I just kept on thinking of things, and then when I'm reading um, the finished draft, it just still doesn't sound quite right. It's just been quite the process, and the other morning, I was feeling pretty defeated. Pretty defeated, and I was feeling like I was failing, and maybe just wasn't meant to do this. So I stopped working. I wake up early and I work before my kids wake up. So I I stopped working. I changed my clothes and I started working out. I really like to exercise every day. It makes me happy. And this last year I've been focusing on getting strong instead of just losing weight. And I just work out from home. So I'm not throwing around any giant weights. But I make do with 20s being my heaviest. And each workout, what I try to do is I try to focus on a muscle group and then work it to muscle failure, meaning like I could not lift this if I wanted to. It's not that it's hard. It's like I can't. The muscle is dead. So I'm lifting these weights and I'm starting to really struggle. And at first it wasn't too hard, but I was feeling pretty good. But man, by by the end of the second round of exercising, I was just getting all sweaty and I'm dripping and I'm huffing and puffing, just working, just working really hard. I guess I was clearly showing the struggle in my face because my five-year-old Emma um, started asking me why I was exercising if it was so hard. And I was so excited because I love when they ask me and I get to teach them about taking care of our bodies and being stronger women. So I got all happy and I answered saying, um, the harder it is for me to do, the stronger I'll get. And if I keep going, then one day I'll be really good at it and it won't be hard anymore. Of course, being five, she just gave like a, oh, cool, you know, shrugged her shoulder a little bit and was on her merry little way. But I was feeling so proud of myself. (laughs) I was like, yes, I just planted that seed and I'm teaching her that pushing through the hard makes us stronger. So I'm back up standing, ready, um, ready to work on the next exercise, feeling so good, had a little pep in my step. And then I realized, uh, Michelle, you want to say that one more time and just look in the mirror. Emma clearly didn't internalize the lesson. It's not like those 20 seconds forever shaped her and now she'll never back down from anything hard. I wish that could be the case, but I'd be very surprised if she could even tell me the lesson, even though it was just a few days ago. But I had a very distinct thought that if I want her to learn and know that lesson, then I need to live it. Talking the talk is only going to get us so far, and I really, really want my girls to be strong women. I want them to know that they are capable and can do anything. I don't want them to ever feel the pains that I felt because of situational or self-imposed limitations. So I finished my workout strong and now it's time to work again and I am fighting those negative thoughts. I'm pushing those inadequacies. I'm pushing those inadequacies. And you know what? I'm on the fifth rewrite, but I act. I've, I think I've actually got it this time. My course creation and even just writing muscles are getting stronger to keep in with the cliche, <laughs> cliche terms. I'm really excited about it though. 
I do think the best part of this whole lesson, though, was when that night, Austin, my husband, and I were watching an episode of The Office, and it was when Michael Scott started his own paper company, and they were they had done a pancake breakfast, you know, an attempt to get some new customers. And during the pancake breakfast, Michael and Ryan were goofing off, but Pam actually talked to a, the one guy who came. He, she gave him the company's information, and then later that day made the company's first sale. And then... <laughs> They cut to a scene with Michael relaxed in his chair and he says, who would have thought that the thing to save this business would be hard work? (laughs) And I just started dying because it seems like such a big, well, duh, when you hear him say it like that. But in the moment, it's hard. It's so much easier to back away from the hard, to just avoid it and do all the fun stuff. But that's not what gets real success. That's not what saves companies. So I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep doing the hard work. I'm going to keep working those muscles because even though I'm not good at some things, that doesn't mean I don't have a message. That doesn't mean I can't make an impact. That doesn't mean that what I believe in and what I'm doing isn't valid and shouldn't be spread around. It's still valid. Even though I'm not super good and eloquent at speaking about it, that doesn't mean that the message isn't true and can't change people's lives. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully that will help someone keep pushing and just don't be too hard on yourself when you aren't super awesome at every aspect of your business. You're not a failure. You just need to strengthen those muscles. So keep pushing yourself. Get every last bit you can out of that weak skill and you'll get better. I can tell it's happening for me. Until next time, you've got this. Hey, lovely ladies. Thanks for listening. Make sure you remember to subscribe and I'd really love to hear your feedback. So don't forget to leave a quick review. 